Well, and here we are again. Uh, hey, it kind of reminds me of a song. Here we go again on my own. And that's, that was probably horrible. So I'm going to quit right now. All right. Today's video is just a quick review on a few things we've been doing. Potential energy, kinetic, and thermal energy review. So let's go ahead and do something. Before we get too fired up, let's uh, put in all the equations that we've learned. We've learned that potential energy is equal to mgy, and that's for, we use that equation anytime you take an object and pick it up or lift it or anything of that nature. Uh, we've learned PE equals one-half potential energy is equal to one-half KX square, and that is for a spring or something like that. We've learned that kinetic energy is equal to one-half MV square, and that's for something that's in motion. And then we've learned Q equals MC delta T, or you can rewrite it as MC TF minus TI if you need to do it that way. Just remember this letter C is the only thing that's kind of strange in there, and that stands for specific heat. And every material has its own specific heat, whether it's water, uh, water, 4,186, uh, everything, sand, 660, everything has its own and that's in J kilogram Celsius degree. Everything has its own specific heat to it. And so that's something that you've got to find in the problems. So let's get started doing these problems. Uh, here we've got a cliff, and there's a car sitting up on top of it. And it tells me that the cliff is 950 meters tall, and it just asks, what is the potential energy? And since this is on the cliff, I'm going to write equals mgy and that would just be 1600 times 9.8 times 950 and if I have a calculator handy I would oh wait I do have a calculator handy uh, let's see that'd be 1600 times 9.8 times 950 and so my answer is good jubilee goo that's like 15 million Joule. So there is my answer to number one. Number two says, what if we, what if that car and the other problem fell off the cliff? How fast would that car be going at the bottom? Well, we got two different ways we could do it, but one way is this. We could just do this, one half mv square, because you've already found the potential energy at the top was 15 million. Well, that PE at the top should be equal to the KE at the bottom. So that means in this problem, we should be able to write 15 million, three more zeros, equals one half mass, which is, it says a 1600 kilogram car, V square. So it'd be 15 million divided by half of 1600, which would be 800. So, and I've already got that in the calculator. So divided by half of 1600, 800. Now you got to remember to do something. You're solving for a square variable. So to get your answer, take the square root of that answer, 14 square root 95, so 136.4. So I'm just going to write 136 meters per second. And there is my velocity. Make sure that you're able to do that problem. Uh, number three, you're trying to raise an object up to give it potential energy. So I'm going to go with MGY. And it gave me my potential over here. So that's 1850 equals M, which is 0 0.250 kilograms times 9.8 times Y. So we can come back in and mathematically, I'm going to take 1850, and I'm going to do it all in my calculator. 1850, and I'm going to divide it by, I'm going to put in parentheses, the product of 0 0.2, 0 0.25 times 9.8. So I'm dividing by the product of 0.25 and 9.8, and it looks like I've got an answer of 755. And this said to raise, so this is a height, so meters is an answer on that one. Number four, this problem instantly says heat, so I'm thinking Q equals MC, and then it's given me two temperatures, so I'm going to write TF minus TI down in this problem. 
And it also says water, which tells me this. And no, you don't for my test. You don't have to have that memorized. But anyway, M for this would be 25,000 times 4, 1, 8, 6, times 23 minus 2. Temperature final minus temperature initial. And this is going to be a huge answer. So 25,000 times 4186 times 23 minus 2 is 21. So the answer is, I'm going to write in scientific notation, 2.2 times 10 to the 9, 10 to the 9 joules. Or if you know your prefix is 2.2 giga joules. <laughs> All right, next one, number 5. This is a this one says a rubber band. It says, even says the word elastic, and it even says elastic potential energy. So it's telling me that this is a spring equation or an elastic equation. And so I'm going to come in. It's asking me to find this PE. So I'm just going to go one half. It says that this 500 newton meters. That's my K. So that's 500 times x squared. Now notice, it gives me two lengths for this rubber band. It tells me when the rubber band is relaxed, it's one meter long. And then it says somebody's stretching it to 1.65. So remember, all X is, X is how far did you stretch the rubber band. And so in this case, you stretch the rubber band 0.65 meters. So in this problem, all I'm going to do is half of 500, which would be 250, but anyway, times 0.65 squared, and that comes out to 105.6. So I'm going to go ahead and just write 106 joules for my answer. Sig figs would actually be 110 joules, but hey, anyway, I like to party. What can I say? Number six is actually... Uh, Basically, number six is an MC delta T. We're taking heat, and we're going to make it equal to heat, just like this. Now, since this one's gave me a bunch of temperatures, I'm going to use TF minus TI instead of delta T. Sorry, I get used to doing physics. So, anyway, so I've got a piece of metal being put in a piece of water. So what's going to happen is this side is going to be my piece of metal, this side is going to be my water. And so if this is problems just seeing if you can make MC delta T equal MC delta T. Well, what was the mass of the metal? Well, it says that the metal is 0.133. It did not tell me what specific heat for the metal is. Now I'm going to leave the temperatures empty for now. Equals the mass of the water is 0.1. C for water is 4186 times the two temperatures. And that's where y'all get messed up. This problem says that there was a hot piece of metal, 130 degrees Celsius. And that hot piece of metal was put into a cool glass of water. And it says that the water is 22 degrees. Now, obviously, what's going to happen here? This, the water is going to heat up and the metal is going to cool down. But here's the trick. Both of them have the same temperature final because they're sitting inside each other. And this is where everybody goes wrong. So delta T for the metal would be 31.2 minus 130. And then over here, it'd be 31.2 minus 22 for the water because that would be your delta T for the water. But that was the trick. And that's why I'll throw you a couple of points if you figure this one out. Uh, let's see if we can't do the math on this one now. Let's just go ahead and do some. We'll work this one out the long way. So let's do this. 0 0.1 times 4186 times the difference between 31.2 and 22. And so I plug that side in and I've got 31851. So this is 31. Thumb eraser. 3. Oh, I forgot. 3851. Oh no, I got short term memory. 3851 equals, I'm going to do everything I can on the other side. So on the other side, what I can do is 0.133 times the difference between 31.2 and 130. So I can subtract my delta T on that side, multiply 
I get negative 13.1. I'm just going to leave my negative off, though. I'm going to write 13C. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 13. So 3851 divided by 13 gives me an answer of 296. Uh, I think if you don't round anything, it comes out to 293. Anyway, joule, kilogram, Celsius, degree. That's my Buick right there. Why do I say Buick? Why not a Cadillac? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Number seven. How much energy? This one says heat energy. So I'm going to write Q equals MC delta T or TF. Well, this just says raise it. This. So I'm just going to write delta T. So it's 11 times. This says that you've got iron. Iron specific heat is 450. No, you didn't have to have that memorized. Times 1500. So let's see what we can't do here. This would be 11 times 450 times, what was this, 1,500? 700, 7,425,000. Wowzers. 7,425,000 joules. Shoo. So a lot of energy in that problem. Next one. A boulder has a kinetic energy of... So this is a kinetic energy problem. V squared. Looks like it gave me a velocity and it's asking me to find mass. Well, no problem. That's going to be 13,000 equals one half of M times 13 square. So what exactly is half of 13 square? Half of 13 square is 84.5 so this is 13,000 equals 84.5 m so now divide both sides by 84.5 so what's 13,000 divided by 84.5 13,000 divided by 84.5 is equal to 153.8. So I'm just going to write 100. Actually, sig figs would just be 150. So 150 kilograms would be my sig fig duck answer to that question. Moving on as fast as we can here. A sandbox is filled with sand. And it's, oh, look at this. There's a the temperature. So I'm going to go and do some. Q equals MC delta T or TF TI. Well, it's giving me two temperatures. So I'm going to end up subtracting those two temperatures. And it gives me 250 kilograms, and it tells me it's sand. Well, if it tells me it's sand, I know that sand is 660 joules per kilogram Celsius degree. And now it does something, though. This sand is, look at this, it's cooling, it's cooling. That means your final temperature is 13, your initial temperature is 48. So I'm going to end up, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, my answer is going to be negative in this problem because this thing is giving off heat. It's cooling down. So 250 times 660, oops, divide, no, times the difference between 13 minus 48. And the answer comes out to negative 5,775,000, 5,775,000. Joules, and I do want to see that negative in there so that you know it's cooling off. Number 10 is a question that says, Look at there, spring. As soon as I see spring in that problem, I know it's going to be this guy. It gave me a PE and it gave me a K, so it's asking for X. So this is 120 equals one half of 250 X squared. So 120 is equal to half of 250, which would be one, oh wow, so my total brain meltdown. Now divide both sides by 120, or excuse me, divide both sides by 125 to get your answer. So 120 divided by 125, and now remember something. See, and I even forgot it, that square, that's where most people mess up. Don't forget to take a square root of that answer. And my answer is 0.98. So 0.98 meters 
would be my X in that one. Number 11, a skydiver has fell out of a plane, only his chute did not open. And it tells me that he's going 112 meters per second when he hits the ground. And the question says, how far did the skydiver jump? Well, I'm just looking for how high. To do this problem, all I'm going to say is, what kind of energy does the skydiver have up here? He's got potential. What kind of energy does he have down here where he hits the ground? That's not very nice to think about. But anyway, he has kinetic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that his mgy energy at the top must be equal to his one-half mv square energy at the bottom. Now, a cool thing about this is the skydiver's mass cancels out. And so this would be 9.8 times y equals one half of 112 square. And if you're thinking, man, he's going really fast. Well, we're assumed that he has no wind resistance. But anyway, so I'm going to go one half times 112 square. And that's my right side. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 9.8. So divided by 9.8. And I've got an answer of 640 meters. So this skydiver fell from a height of 640 meters. Long way to fall. Number 12. Now I tried doing some. It's a heat question. So I'm just going to write Q equals MC. What temperature change would occur? So I'm looking for delta T. Cool. Well, there's my Q there. So this would be 34,000 equals what's mass well this says milliliter of water the density of water is the water's density is one gram for every milliliter so if you've got 23,000 milliliters of water you've also got 23,000 grams of water so I'm gonna say mass is 23 times C for water hey this problem is in grams. So I'm going to use 4.186, not 4,186. Because remember, water is 4.186 joules for every gram Celsius degree. And this problem is in grams. None of the others have it. Delta T. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this by the product of the right side. So I'm going to see if I can't take and go, what was this? I can't see my number, 34,000. 34,000 divided by the product, 23,000 times 4.186. Close that down, and it's 0.35, so not much of a temperature change, Celsius degrees. Not much of a temperature change at all. By the way, I'll take a moment to say a very tricky, little trivial thing. If you've got a temperature, a temperature is actually a degree Celsius. Like somebody says, hey, how hot is it outside? You might say, oh, it's 21 degrees Celsius. How hot is it going to be tomorrow? Uh, it's supposed to be 23 degrees Celsius tomorrow. Then your change in temperature, are you ready for this? Your change in temperature would be 2 Celsius degrees. Did you catch it? The degree side, flip-flop. When you have a change in temperature, the degree sign comes after the C. <laughs> when you've got a temperature, the degree sign comes in front of it. Oh my goodness, the tricks, the tricks that we find in this world of physics and chemistry. All right, last question is a little toy gun and it's shooting a projectile up into the air. Now there's a little spring down here in the toy gun, it says, that's going to do the shooting. Well, that spring is a one-half kx square. And then we're shooting it up into the air to some height. Well, that means, since energy is not created or destroyed, my two equations got to be equal to each other. And so all i got to do is one-half. The problem is actually looking for K because it says, what is the spring constant? 
k times x, which x is 0 0.12. It tells me how far you can move the spring. The projectile is 20 grams, which would be 0 0.2 kilograms times 9.8 times y, which is 20 meters. And so now we'll sit here and do a little math on this. Let's do the right side, 0 0.02 times 9.8 times 20 equals, oh, this is a long video, 3.92, 3.92. And the other side, we need to reduce the half of 0.12 times 0.12 squared is, what is that side? 7.2 times 10 to the negative 3, so 7.2 times 10 to the negative 3, which would be 0072. And now divide both sides by 7.2, 10 to the negative 3. So 3.92 divided by 7.2, 10 to the neg negative third equals 544.4 repeating. K okay, equals 544. Uh, this would be in Newton slash meter. It would actually be in sig figs. It'd just be 500. So there's only one sig fig in this problem. If you notice that 20 up there kind of wrecked that far. But anyway, there is our final answer. And this concludes this review. And to any of you that's still watching at this point, I will give you a drawing. Ha, ha, ha. Na, na, na. Oh, this is a classic. Ah, I gotta love it. Anyway, bye now.